here. I know, I'm like, settle in, take a deep breath, don't be frantic. It's pretty organic, so nothing to worry about. So, um, so I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about myself first, um, and then what we'll do, I have a little prayer I found that I think is really appropriate for today, and then we'll light the candle and just see what happens. So um, I was telling um, the gal here that the energy is really heavy coming here, so we've got some people in here for sure. <laughs> Um, so I have a feeling there's something intense that we're going to do, but, um, anyways, so, uh, my name's Lisa Marie. Um, I'm a fourth generation psychic that we know of. Um, obviously I don't know my great, great grandmother probably was too, but, um, my great grandmother, uh, Viola was a medium and a channel and automatic wrote until she died at 98 years old. She had stacks of papers all over her retirement apartment full of stuff she wrote. Um, that she channeled, she was really amazing. Um, and she's my gatekeeper now, so um, I don't, first off, before, wait, let me back back up first. How many of you guys have been to something like this before? Couple, and how many of you have had psychic readings before? So almost everybody, got a newbie on that too, okay. So because this is a small group, we have the luxury, you can ask questions. Um, or if there's anything you're curious about, you know, for yourself or also just about how all this works, I'm happy to answer that for you. So anyway, so um, my, my great-grandmother is my gatekeeper, and so what that means is that um, when we communicate with the other side, it's a little bit like playing charades with someone you can't see. Um, so the information, sometimes I hear it. Um, most of the time it's pictures, so I'll see images of things, and I have my own like symbol uh, vocabulary. So like I have a grandma's face, I'll see if it's a grandma. Um, I'll have certain things like hearts and hugs and bears and whatever. You know, there's all these different things that over the years I know if I see that, that means a certain thing for me. Um, so every medium is different in how they communicate. Some hear everything. Um, I always tell people, you know, when you eat dinner, you taste it, you smell it, you hear it cooking, all of that. It's the same thing with this. We have, there's all these different senses going on. And some spirits, when they pass over, are very easy to communicate with. Some are harder. And they all have different ways of communicating. So what my great-grandmother does as a gatekeeper is she helps communicate if they're having a hard time. And she'll give me additional information. Because sometimes, I mean, think about it. If you didn't believe in any of this, when you were alive. It's gonna be pretty weird to just communicate when you're not alive. So um, she helps with that now. Um, my grandmother was a medium also, um, and she was a shaman, so she did a lot with Native American and animal totems. And, and then my mother is has had prophetic dreams since I was a little girl. Um, I remember her always knowing things. <laughs> She'd be like, I dreamt this, this is gonna happen, and it would. Um, so really wild things happened that she dreamt about and then knew about um, and she reads tarot cards um, as well um, and then I'm kind of a combination of all of it. Um, I saw people um, who were passed on when I was a little kid so I was scared a lot, didn't like to be in my room at night in the dark because I saw people standing there. I, I vividly remember always this man in like a real road suit like railroad overalls and like a hat that would stand at my door like every night for a year I mean years and years probably from like age nine to like 17 years old I mean this guy stood there I don't know what happened to him but eventually he went away and I don't know if it was a house I was growing up in or what it was but he was there um, so I saw a lot of things and new stuff and was probably overly sensitive very empathic like I knew what was going on with people around me and um, so it was challenging for sure I mean it was a challenging um, thing to manage but I was lucky that it was in my family so it wasn't confusing I think what was confusing is that no one else did it like I kind of just assumed everybody knew you know oh I talked you know see somebody who passed or whatever but my friends were like what <laughs> are you talking about <laughs> Um, and then as a young adult, I learned to read tarot cards also, and so I read for myself and my friends and stuff. It was really accurate, and, um, but didn't, again, didn't really think anything of it, I guess, you know. And so life went on, and I got married, and, you know, worked full-time job and all these things, and then had some things happen in my life where I was like, wow, I really need to figure out what I'm doing. 
And uh, when I did that, I, I did hear a voice. I mean, I heard a pretty loud voice that was like, you need to get your cards out. Well, I hadn't thrown a tarot card at that time in probably six, seven years. And this was in 2007, so this is 10 years ago. So I dug through all my boxes, I found my cards, I started throwing cards, and I was like, I'm supposed to help people, like I need mm -hmm. to do this. And so 10 years ago, I opened my doors, started reading people, got really busy really fast, and was working full-time as a psychic, left my full-time, you know, the mundane job, and went and did psychic work. And, and what came of that is, and this is something some of you I have a feeling may know what I'm talking about, some of you it might be a new concept, but... Um, when you start to do spiritual work, even if it's for other people, it, you can't help but work on yourself. <laughs> and so in doing that, I realized, you know, I was married to an alcoholic, and I was overweight, and I was not well, and I wasn't happy, and, you know, all these things, you know, a spiral of things. And so um, I ended up uh, leaving my husband and, you know, getting out on my own and trying to take care of my health. And so for the last, like, nine years... Um, I've been doing nothing but working on myself. You know, I've kept, you know, my clients through that time, but I haven't, wasn't actively, you know, marketing or putting my, I did events like this all the time and I hadn't done anything like this in a long time. And so um, I've been really lucky. I went through some health stuff. I lost 100 pounds. Um, wow. Had a couple near death experiences that were very challenging and really life changing for me. Um, spiritually to go through those and so um, I met the love of my life who's sitting right there and uh, yeah and uh, so it's just time for me to like go back out into the world so um, I have more information and I'm able to support I think people in a different way now um, but one of the biggest things that's changed is other than really close friends and clients I really didn't talk about my mediumship abilities um, because it was not something I really felt like was front and forward. So you guys are sitting here with like this first time I've been in this event center in nine years. It's been nine years. Um, and uh, this is only the second time I've done a group reading like this um, with talking to spirits. Um, the one I did nine, ten years ago, there was probably 40 people and it was pretty amazing. Um, and uh, you know, so I know it's meant to be, but um, this is the first time I'm really putting it out there, like, oh, by the way, there's this whole other thing I do, because I've always just read and told people what I thought and saw, so so that's 